Okay! What will we find in the lair of Dr. Vauclair? Will it be a pair of hairs? Alright, let's actually play. Let's play more Shadowrun. Assuming the game wants me to play more Shadowrun and doesn't just want to sit here. Here we go. Panacea. The sounds of machinery fading behind you as you venture further underground. Whoever built this facility was clearly well financed. It must have taken years to design, excavate, and build a complex like this in secrecy. You continue through the dimly lit halls, finally stepping into what appears to be another laboratory area. That the corridor before you is deserted. Dr. Adrian Vauclair is somewhere within this facility. And with him, the answers you seek. Bum, 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 bum! Gotta have the dramatic music. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, look who it is. The old man behind the glass works feverishly at the console, glancing at you when he can. A cigarette, cigarette, a cigarette? A cigarette, a cigarette. A cigarette dangles from his mouth, its bluish smoke curling around his head. An overflowing ashtray sits on the lab table in front of him. The years have not been kind, but his features are instantly recognizable. Despite his age, he still has that strong chin and high cheekbones you remember from the Green Winters DVD. This is Dr. Adrian Vauclair. As you approach, he stops what he's doing, a look of intense irritation on his face. He clears his throat and a harsh, rasping sound emerges from the loudspeaker next to the glass. So you're the Shatterunders that Audrin warned me about. I'm assuming you left a trail of corpses in your way. I don't know why I've changed his voice, but it seems appropriate. Well, I should do a bit of more accent like this. But so you are the shadow runners that Odrand warned me about. I assume you've left a trail of corpses in your wake. I got a message for him from Alfonso. If you wish to speak to my security captain, that can be arranged. He reaches down and flips a switch. You are allowed thudding to click behind you as the door locks shut. You'll find that the blast door behind you is sealed, and the laboratory you occupy is fully secured. That was kind of the idea. I mean, like, he's been smoking too much. An important precaution. You keep your test subjects in here, and they are... We keep our test subjects in here, and uh, they are far more dangerous than you. He takes a drag on his cigarette. I won't permit you to cause any further harm, Shadowrunner. You will remain trapped where you are for your own good. I'm starting to think. I'm starting to think that uh, this bioweapon is actually to kill. Um, maybe, maybe like Fishwinger. Like, maybe it's to kill what's left of Fairschwinger. Let it remain silent. Now, he fixes you with level stare. I want to know why in the hell you so violently interjected yourself into my business. First, you break into my estate when you didn't even know this was mine. Then you, tra you spend what it must have been a small fortune to track me down. You locate my AI and destroy it. And drive it. And drive out all the way into the countryside and finally you shoot your way into my laboratory. He leans forward, hands on the table, his eyes narrowed into a piercing stare. So I ask you, Shadowrunner. Who are you and why in God's name are you here? 
all the cigarettes, it's just like really fucked his voice. We don't know that the accent he has. It could be you. something like this. That's really where I intended to go at first, but it just kind of slowly devolved. Let's see. Um, came to find you, Vauclair, to help us stop Fairswinger. Except the Firewing wasn't the one after us after all. It was you. Vauclair sighs, covers his face with pale nicotine stain stains hands. Do you to help stop Fairswinger? That is ironic. But yes, you are correct. I am the one who has been hunting you. The one who sent Apex and Odran after you. So you're going to pay for that, you bastard. Why attack the Crates Bazaar? Beauclair, why kill Paul Amsel? It was... It was necessary to perceive, preserve the secrecy of my work. For the greater good of all, I have wronged you. And for this I am sorry. He sighs a long, rattling sigh and quickly turns into a violent fit of coughing. The sound echoes over the loudspeaker. He collects himself and continues. I don't expect you to understand, nor do I have time to explain it to you. Now, I must know, how did you learn that I was still alive? How did you even know to look for me? Did someone send you? Beauclair starts, and the sudden movement of his arm sends his overflowing ashtray flying from the table in a cloud of ash. A look of dread fills his face. A bit to the end? What do you mean? There is army! Explain yourself! I'm sorry, Doc. He was digging too deeply into Fairswinger, so Apex killed him. I... I didn't. He suddenly... He is suddenly overcome by another fit of coughing. He steadies himself on one arm of the chair. Apex. I should have never trusted that thing. Oh, Ermi, the things I have sacrificed. All of this, all for Panacea, all for tonight. What are you planning with Panacea? Yes. Yes, you know about it then. Panacea is my life's work, a permanent solution to an age old problem. It will mean the end of the dragons, not just Fairswinger. All dragons. So let me just... Okay, so we've got some sort of genocide going on. Explain yourself, Doctor. O'Clair fumbles in his pockets, produces a fresh cigarette. He lights it with shaking hands and breathes in deeply. The orange glow of the cigarette flares bright. He exhales the words word spill out with the smoke. The firewing burned and murdered and caused untold damage in her bestial rage. Until the dragon fall. Until I stopped her. But the destruction was nearly a symptom of a greater cancer. Fair swinger brought destruction with fire and claw. The dragons of today... Loftware, Dunkelzahn, Saladir, the kill and conquer with subtler tools, deception, manipulation, corruption. He spits with disgust. I don't know why I said he spits with disgust with his accent. They use us as pawns, playing pieces, puppets in their millennia young long machinations. Oh yes, the dragons are a cancer, one that will conquer or worse, destroy all of humanity, if we do not stop it. One that metastasized with the world awakened. An ironic metaphor, since it was the falling of my own body that allowed me to see it. See it. Hey, 
I did the chase. Good or bad, it's immaterial. I do what is necessary. He trembles, racked by a violent cough. As the coughing subsides, he takes another long drag on his cigarette, the ash creeping closer and closer towards his mouth. I am sorry, Ernie. I am sorry you won't be able to see for yourself. I am sorry I failed you. Lecara turns his attention back to the computer, stubbing out his cigarette. He grabs a fresh one from the pack and lights it. Again? Man, this dude is... Where is he getting all these cigarettes? Tonight I will release my papacy on the world. How absurd, the instrument of Dragonkind's destruction. He presses a button on the terminal, and a large observation window at the far end of the room rises, open slowly. It will be carried by Fair Swinger herself. Oh my! Through the glass you see the pro prostrated form of a dragon. Far below, far below, an enormous set of shackles binds it, and a maze of tubes snakes into its body. The tubes connect to a cruel looking apparatus that has been mounted to the wall. Son of a bitch. Look at that! He just, like, coughs, and, like, one flies out of his mouth, and then he picks that one up, shakes it off, and lights it. He found her alive in the socks after all. <clears throat> Tonight the fire wing will fly again. Infected with panacea, she will be slowly destroyed from within. But before that happens... She will provide us with the catalyst for global transmission of the virus. Catalyst? What catalyst? As if spurred on by the sight of the dragon below, he begins to type furiously on the con on the terminal. Fierce wing is fire. We carry the agent in its dormant state. Any met humans exposed will become carriers, and they will spread the disease to other dragons. Carriers will be infected with panacea as well, but will not harm them. To non dragons, it is a nuisance. Nothing more. If a critical mass of carriers is achieved, my panacea will become unstoppable. I will, <coughs> I will, spread, it will spread across the globe in a relentless tide. However, if it does not reach at this critical mass, it will fizzle, die out, become inert. Hence the need for a Grand Zero. A flashpoint for a Mass Infection event. I am so sorry, Emmy. <coughs> I, I know how you loved your flux state, but that doesn't matter now. It must be Berlin. Oh, fuck beans. He's gonna destroy Berlin. Berlin. He's gonna destroy the Berlin! Uh, yeah, there's gotta be a better way for this. He continues his work, filled with feverish en energy. Slad, sadly, there is not. If there were, I would gladly take it. For panacea to work, Berlin must burn. A tragic sacrifice must be made for the greater good. The greater good. Fierschwinger will breathe her infected fire upon Berlin. Sassins will die, and through the destruction, the virus will take to the air. A critical mass of Berlin's metahuman population will be exposed. But no one will even think to quarantine the city until it's too late. The flux state lacks any centralized authority. Corporations will evacuate their own. Dozens will flee the city infected. Oh yes, army. Berlin is the perfect flashpoint. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to happen tonight, no. But uh, this little intervention of yours leaves us no choice. So let us see. Tonight's wind patterns dictate Grand Zero to be Tempelhof Schonenberg. Highly populated, the virus will spread quickly enough from there. So it's only a few kilometers from the Kreuzbazaar. The Kreuzbazaar? My favorite cafe is in the Kreuzbazaar. Look, you're crazy! We're probably all gonna die! But we're not letting you get away with this. Nonsense. <laughs> You have set, you have sealed tight in that laboratory, impotent to stop me. The old man eyes the cigarette butt in his hand and fishes another one from the pack and lights it. 
with the first. And then he returns to the console, reaching to the side for a microphone. He mutters something into the receiver. You can barely make out the sound of the name Aldrin. Security will be here soon, and they will take care of you. Do not worry. You will not be harmed. The sacrifice that I am making tonight is a necessary evil. It cannot be helped. So long as you remain confined, I see no reason to kill you too. Um... Are you getting fair swing to go? Oh, that! That's simple enough. He gestures to the left. She has no choice. The gaunt woman in the containment cell stands rigidly, her face pressed against the glass, her haunted yellow eyes tracking her every move. She seems frightened, disoriented, lost. Her mouth moves silently, her voice muted by her glass cage. So the stories Green Venters found were true. First Stringer's astral form was separated from her body when she fell. He trapped it somehow. Yes, yes. But that came later. In 2012, when we took down the first Stringer with this inexperimental weapon, this device, so was it to say, I couldn't fully predict how it would affect her. In 2036, I led a search team into the socks. I had to know what had happened to the creature I had slain. We found her alive in the bay. The dragon's astral form, her spirit, you might say, had been ripped from her body by the weapon. It was trapped inside a young woman living in the socks. A mob of glow punks revealed her, treated her like a goddess. <coughs> we transported the young woman and the dragon's body here, where I could study them. You mean she's been in that cell for almost 20 years? No choice. A creature separated from its astral form cannot live more than a few hours before both die. It was the high intensity radiation of the socks combined with the magical creature inside her that allowed the woman to live as long as she has. So, the environment within her containment chamber mirrors that of the socks. It has allowed us to keep Fairshwinger alive all these years, while her bestial shell remains chained up below. Now as for her physical form, that will be simple as well. We've drilled a series of electrical charges into her skull. When we release the Firewing's body, empty of her astral self, she will trigger all the vicious it will trigger all the vicious instincts and primal urges left in her reptile brain. She will unleash her fire of every commandment. That's horrific. Yeah. Yeah, okay. He shrugs. Summarize as you wish. His story will prove me right. Nevertheless, I'm done discussing it with you. Fishwinger must fly. Berlin must be sacrificed. And it must be tonight. But where's the damn Odrin? Yeah, you don't burn a city and call it sacrifice. <laughs> Was it mass murder in America? Drops the atomic bomb on Japan? The biopic would say yes, just as you are now. But they did it for a cause, to shorten the agony of war, to save the lives of thousands upon thousands of soldiers. I do the same for the good of the world. You do remember that America was pretty divided on this. We're not talking ethics here. We're talking parallels. But I do, it will prevent a greater evil from taking place. Humanity was born to reproduce, to multiply, but dragons, dragons were born to acquire, accumulate, <clears throat> to hard. Both strive to blend the world to their will. Humanity has conquered the air, land, and sea through sheer numbers. Dragons, however, employ different means altogether. Throughout history, they have allowed us to do the heavy lifting. But they, they pulled their strings. There are 17 great dragons in the world today. 17 ancient worms, millennia old, slowly dividing the planet into 17 piles of gold to nest on, in front of our ice. But upon the time they burned castles to steal treasure we collected, laid waste to entire armories. But here, 
here in this sixth world is no longer about tooth and claw and fiery breath. It is now about public relations, marketing, mergers, and acquisitions. You see it every day. Dragons in the studio and boardrooms, they gather influence, wealth, and power, continually holding, holding until one of them sits at the top of it all. Perhaps not in this cycle of the world, perhaps not in the next, but one day, one worm will stand triumphant with all of the humanity as its cattle, all the world as its prize, and that, that I will not allow. Plan of yours killed your brother. Is that really worth it? No! Nothing. Nothing can make that right. Damn it, Ami. Why couldn't you just let me go? Listen to reason, Vauclair. Would Hermie want you to do this? You do not know my brother, Shadowrunner. Do not presume to speak to me on his behalf. Hermie... Amy would support me in this if he knew what I know. Probably know him better than anyone but you. You've watched footage. And what does that make you think you know the man? You know nothing! Uh, he wanted you to stop all of this years ago. He begged you to. Leclerc falls silent. A wisp of smoke traces his way from the tip of his cigarette to the ceiling. She's right, Vauclair. Your brother. He was a miserable bastard. But he did die trying to save you. If you don't turn your back from this, his death will have not meant nothing. Nothing at all. That is enough! Ami's death was a tragedy. I will not let you use it to manipulate me. Leclerc straightens. He looks angry, but behind the anger you can see a sense of deep fatigue. Even if you succeed in eliminating the dragons, you'll create a dangerous power vacuum. A pointless argument. Any power vacuum created through Dragon Kind's extermination will be filled by metahumanity. Any backlash will write, write itself over time. I'm playing the long game, Shadow Runner. One that was played over thousands of years. When you think on that scale, everything seems possible. Humanity will endure and the dragons will perish. Look, you're not infallible, Doc. You've already made mistakes here, and people have died. Mistakes? He uses the tip of his cigarette to stare at the glass. So this is the career criminal trapped in the containment room. Yeah, I've read some of your inner office communications. We have suffered losses, yes. They were tragic. <clears throat> but the people here accepted that there would be risks. They made their own choices. I won't take blame for that. Basic lapses and laps. Is there some point you're trying to make? Are you just trying to anger me? My point is everyone makes mistakes, and even you, and yet you want to roll the dice with a bio weapon? It feels work. I'm telling you. Bet you told your researchers that their lab will be safe too. Look at that turned out. But I'm not even talking to you. You're trapped in there. And I've got work to do. Aldrin will be here for you soon enough. The old man turns away from you, studying some invisible detail in his console. I've heard enough of this, Vauclair. You're nuts. So there has to be a better way, Vauclair. There has to be. A man of science, Seattle Randar. <laughs> a better path may exist, but I do not know what it is. I wish that I didn't have to sacrifice so many. I wish, I wish Ermia hadn't had to die. But the solution is here, now in my hands. I choose to take it. Through the speakers, you can hear the sound of heavy footsteps approaching. Well! I tried. Ah, Odren. It's about time you throw it up. Sorry, Doctor. We were wa waking up on the dragon's physical 
we were w we were waking up on the dragon's physical form. I don't know what that means. That we were waking up. The we're waking up. Oh, we were waking it up. I understand. I'm just a stupid orc who who can't even do consistent accents. It, it, it what we had to do required some care, but but the procedure is ready to begin now. You should see to it. The orc sneers at you from behind the glass. His scarred features writhing in the dancing light of Vauclair's monitor. Looks like you trapped the thugs who were attacking the manor. Yes. They won't be a problem anymore. But uh, with Apex gone, our security is still compromised. We'd best still hurry. One Otrin, don't forget to clean the containment unit afterwards. The virus will kill Fairswinger along with the rest when it does. Her astral form will perish as well. Human host or no. If we get out of here, Claire, you will regret it. I promise you. Quiet! Everything's ready in the chamber, Dr. Vauclair. I think you should start the procedure yourself. Yes, my friend. It is time, Ermi. Let's do some good. I will begin the infusion process. Aldrin, please make sure our guests here are securely locked away before you come down. I am sorry, Fox. Sorry for your friend, Paul Amsel. Sorry for Frau Schaefer. Sorry for the Kreuzbazaar. Sorry for Berlin. I wish there was another way. Um. A labyrinth plan to destroy an entire species, a massive underground fortress with an army of mercenaries. You sound like a dragon, Doc. Fire flashes in his eyes and his back straightens. And what do you presume to know of dragons? I have spent my entire life studying them. Then you should see my point. You're acting like a dragon. Perhaps. Perhaps I am. But for one difference. I am a man. And I am finite. A man can gather power wield it in his lifetime, but uh, nothing more. His work will fade, lost to the inevitable entropy that decays all. Oh, he must create a dynasty that will stand for a time, but his dust will not reap its benefit. His voice is steady now. For a moment, his age and illness and fatigue fall away. Dragons? Dragons are immortal. Time means nothing to them. But they will. They will. And no power can truly stop them, unless it is death itself. For, plague, famine, natural disaster, setbacks, merely setbacks, avarice eternal. <coughs> no, Shadowrunner, I am not one of them, no more than you are. Beauclair looks down for a moment and then turns and exits the room. Aldrin turns to stare at you through the glass. His lips curl into an insolent smile. Hi again. Long time. How's Amsel doing? That hole in his brain pan heal up okay? <laughs> Tonto you want. If we get out of here, you'll wish you never set foot in the Great's Bazaar. The burned orc knocks on a heavy transplast window separating you. Afraid that's not gonna happen. This lab's locked down tight, and like the doc said, these test subjects that they keep in there, they don't play well with others. Dangerous, nasty things. And they don't smell great either. But you'll see for yourself in a second. We need to talk to you about that. You can do some deodorant for yourself, big guy. You stink from your smoldering corpse, will co stink from your smoldering corpse will cover it, asshole. Listen, I gotta go. Have fun with the test subjects while I'm gone. He grins and flips a switch on the console. You hear the hiss of doors sliding open nearby. If you're still alive when I get back, I'll put a bullet in you or something. Well then.
What the fuck is that thing? A, f a fucking Drake. He sounds like a sadist who wants us to be torn apart. That's what he sounds like. Hello, kitty. Coming back up. Let it get a little bit closer. Oh, yay. More than one. Okay, so it's not coming closer. That's a problem. Okay, well, that's a problem. Okay, so they explode. That's good to know. Fuck. I thought he would come a little further forward. Damn it. Damn it, 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 damn it. Not getting that reference, I'm sorry. Song Pardon Me? Okay, just keep going, Glory. Understand. 
Glory, 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 glory. Fuck. Fuck a doodle do. Um, okay. Yep! I thought that might happen. Leave this alone for now. Let's use one of these. Who is the worst off? Me and Diedrich. So let's take this. And then have Glory use this. Don't trust Kitty. She's around here somewhere, doing dangerous Kitty things. Okay, fish winger. Let's chat. The gaunt woman paused at the glass at your approach, her haunted yellow eyes tracking your every move. When you activate the intercom, a green light activates inside the containment cell, and she flinches at it, startled. Fish winger. A small voice whispers through lips that barely move. It sounds hoarse and awkward, like a rusty lock. Help. Please. Help. You don't look much like a dragon. Free me. Please. You must. Let's think this through, boss. Be careful. Can you understand me? Must stay aloft. Ride the thermals. Make the wind work for me. I'm very tired now. Your yellow eyes lock onto yours. Free me, Vauclair. Free me or burn. Very tempted to say crazy woman is crazy. I'm not Vauclair. Realization mixed with pity appears on Diedrich's face. My god. Fierschwinger's astral form has been trapped in that woman for 40 years. She's been confined in this cage for 20. That's torture. Nothing deserves this fox. But all the same, we can't just set her free. Free! Yes, free! Free me and I will return to the mountain. And I will sleep until the next age of this world. And I will not harm another soul. Just free me free. I must stay aloft. Help you. 
grant you release from here. And you repay in kind, yes. Yes. There's a panel on the floor behind you. Drop down into the guts of this place. The guts, find the guts. By my body, the machine. Break it, break it, break it. Well, find it. No promises. Free me! Free me or the flesh will be raked from your bones. Burn you to cinders. Burn you to ash. Burn you to nothing. This I swear, little woman. She seems angry. Oh, cranky. Mrs. Cranky Pants. Okay, Mrs. Cranky Pants. Mrs. Cranky Lady Dragon Pants. 